How's everybody doing? So today we're going to be doing Tree Tuesdays, episode one. This series I'm going to be alternating every other Tuesday with my Training Tuesday series because I wanted to bring the content all more in line with the agriculture side of things and somebody said something that kind of inspired in my brain like, oh, you know, trees could be their own thing. But I also don't feel like I can grow enough different types of trees to merit doing 52 of these a year. So we're going to keep them every other week. Uh, today we're in the swamp to talk about a pretty unique and awesome tree. So today I want to talk about the bald cypress tree. The bald cypress tree is a coniferous tree native to the southern U.S., although its range does extend as far north as Illinois and Maryland along the Mississippi River and the Atlantic seaboard. Uh, it also has a very close cousin, more of a sister, honestly, called the Montezuma bald cypress that's native to parts of Mexico. And for the most part, I'm going to be talking about the two interchangeably today because they're basically the same tree with one major difference that we'll touch on in a minute. So first, let's go ahead and look at some of mine. So we're here with a couple of bald cypress saplings. Now these came a couple of months ago or maybe about a month ago from the Arbor Day Foundation. Now, unfortunately, only two of them seem to be thriving this is more a byproduct of the way that saplings are shipped by the United States Postal Service. And the Arbor Day Foundation obviously is, you know, a, a nonprofit. They're not a, you know, company trying to make money. So it's kind of understandable that they ship in the most unexpensive way possible. If you get one professionally from a tree farm or something, obviously you're gonna have a lot better success for, than that. And probably more likely than not, you're gonna wanna get one that's bigger than this anyway. So what exactly are bald cypress trees used for? What would you grow one for? So bald cypress trees have been used medicinally going all the way back to Aztec times where they burned the resin and used it to treat infections and sores and things like that, uh, wounds. It's also been used throughout history for a number of different things. The seeds, the needles, the bark have been used to treat everything from gout to heart disease to ulcers malaria, all kinds of different things. But, you know, it does have some use also in lumber. It's used, its lumber is a very solid hard wood that is used to build docks and boats and bridges. But for the most part, if you're getting one of these, you're going to be getting it for its decorative purposes. So here we have two beautiful adult bald cypress trees on my property in their native habitat. Now you can see these are really unique looking trees. They're conversation starters. Their bark has a real cool texture to it. They have needles, but they're not an evergreen. They're actually deciduous. And this is actually where their name comes from because they're known to drop their needles, particularly early in season. This gives them the name, the bald cypress. But perhaps the feature that they're best known for is so you're welcome for hanging over alligator infested waters to get this shot, but these are cypress knees. <clears throat> they are a unique structure that grows above the roots of the cypress tree. And nobody's quite sure what the purpose of them is, although there are some theories. They're also the deciding difference between the Montezuma bald cypress and the American bald cypress. The Mexican variant does not produce cypress knees. Now an interesting thing that you should note that we're going to cover later on in the video in the pros and cons is that not all American bald cypress trees produce knees either. Let's talk about those pros and cons. So, you're thinking about growing one of these things or maybe thinking about growing a whole farm of them. What are the pros and cons? Let me help you make that decision. Now, starting with the pros, first off, as we discussed earlier, these trees are incredibly unique and beautiful. They're a conversation starter. Their bark is really, really cool looking. They have those neat deciduous needles and they have the knees. 
That being said, you should be aware getting into this that if you're growing these in your yard, you are probably not going to get the knees, even on the American bald cypress. Why is that? Well, there's a reason that I'm down here specifically showing you these ones down by the river, even though it's hard for me to get good shots and angles on them. And that's because they have to be in or immediately adjacent to the water to grow the knees. It is a reaction to their roots living underwater, right? Now, pro number two, in the correct environment, once they are, you know, in a place that they're comfortable, they are incredibly hardy and long lived. These things, you're not going to kill them once they get to the right place. Now that is going to come back around in the con section. Pro number three, they do have medicinal uses. And if you are looking for, or if you're into like traditional medicines or plants and trees with medicinal uses, that's going to be a great tree for you because it's been used for thousands of years for all kinds of things. Now, this is not my area of expertise. I cannot tell you how effective that it is. I cannot tell you if it's safe. I do not know. All I can tell you for sure is that I know for a fact that people have been using it medicinally for thousands of years. So what are the cons? Con number one, these things are a mess. I saw all over message boards I was looking through last night, people complaining about or saying they needed to take out their bald cypress tree because of the mess it's made. Like I said earlier, it's called a bald cypress for a reason. These things famously shed and they make a huge mess in the process. Con number two. I did say that they are hardy and long-lived trees. However, they are only hardy and long-lived trees in the correct environment. If you live in a dry place or a cold place or even a pretty temperate place, these things are not going to grow. You need to be in like a tropical or subtropical environment with plenty of heat and humidity. Con number three is that they are called a bald cypress for a reason. These things spend a considerable portion of the year bald, especially if you're not in Florida or Mexico or maybe Southern Louisiana. The further north that you get, you have to remember that the earlier in the year the sun starts to go down earlier, the less light you get, and that's what triggers the cycle in trees that causes them to shed and stuff. So especially if you start moving more north, your bald cypress tree is going to spend a considerable portion of the year living up to its name, bald. So now that you've heard all that, you're still interested in growing a bald cypress tree or maybe a whole farm of them. What kind of care instructions do we have for you? Well, first things first, I want to again emphasize the fact you need to live in a warm, humid place, preferably someplace in this tree's natural range. But assuming that you meet that criteria, first thing you'll notice is that mine are not in the typical soil mixture that I use for trees, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, these things naturally grow in and around the water and in swamps. That means that they are going to prefer a siltier soil or something that's based on clay or muck. Some type of soil that you're going to find either on the bank of a river or in a swamp, right? They also need to be kept in pretty acidic conditions. Uh, their range is between 5.5 and 6.8. Personally, I have found that between 6.0 and 6.2 seems to be about the sweet spot. These things will let you know if their pH gets too high. They're prone to something known as chlorosis, which is when the green kind of leaves the leaves, or the needles in this case, of the plant. And if you start to see that, you're going to need to drop the pH of your soil. Uh, there are things that are made and sold to do that, or there's things you can make at home organically that work to do the job as well. Feeding is going to be done ideally in the early spring. You can, of course, use natural compost and compost teas. And in fact, my Farm Friday video this week is going to be on compost teas, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, if you want to go the chemical route, I have read that a 10-10-10 granular fertilizer seems to be the ideal choice. Again, I don't use chemical fertilizers, but that seems to be what everybody recommends. So, 
Are you interested in growing a bald cypress tree? Is there anything I missed or that you'd like clarification on? Let me know in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you two weeks from today to cover our next focus tree. And Friday, I'll be here on Farm Friday with some more organic and home gardening tips. Have a great day and peace.